Good afternoon Trinidad and Tobago, I'm Rishi Harinan and C News is live at noon. And just to let you know that from today the new newscast is half an hour as we continue to give you the best in local, regional and international news as well as weather and sport. Parents of students attending the Princess Town Presbyterian No. 1 school this morning protested outside the facility, saying nothing was done to improve the conditions in which their children are forced to work. They say since June 2015, they were placed at the Princess Town Presbyterian No. 2 school at Craignish Village as they were told that the structure had to be demolished. However, nothing has been done since. Okay, this has not happened. We are going to the second year now and we are seeing schools all around us being built. We have New Grant AC being built in two weeks and they only went down in May. Right? While we are happy for them, we would like to feel like them this morning. But we cannot. Okay? We have the situation where the ministry is saying that they will... I have been told this by the minister, Dr. Lovell Francis. He told me, right, that they will not repair a school that Ministry of Works says has to be demolished. She said the school has about 1,000 students with only six washrooms and this is just one of the problems. Nothing has been done on this school to make it ready for this morning. We're still there with six washrooms. Okay? We have a class in a stock room here. We have no music facilities, no art facilities, no library because all those rooms are being occupied as classrooms and it is still not enough. Earlier today, CNU spoke with Minister of Education, Anthony Garcia, who said everything went smoothly as it relates to preparations for the opening of the new school year. All those schools are in a fine shape to accommodate our students. Schools like Barakpo, Asda, um, New Grant Anglican School, um, Superior Presbyterian School, and a few others do on our radar. Look has been done and the contractors worked 24 hours to ensure that those schools are ready. Now the Ministry of Education will be holding a press conference in just about an hour's time to talk about the opening of the new school term and you can stay tuned to see news for all the updates. President of the Prisons Officers Association, Saron Richards, has been suspended. Mr. Richards confirmed his suspension to the media moments after receiving the suspension letter at the Prisons Administration building this morning. Mr. Richards said he has been suspended pending an investigation into an incident which took place in March when his house was broken into and his firearm stolen. Well, the, the letter did outline that the suspension was pending the investigation. Right, I well, am being investigated on two, on two allegations, the contents of which will be disclosed at some time later, after I have consulted my attorneys and so on. But the suspension, based on the letter, is pending the investigation that is launched against me. And our senior news reporter Peter Christopher was there, and we join him now to find out what's taking place. Good afternoon, Peter. Yes, good. Good day, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I just came back from that press conference with Mr. Richards. Well, not a press conference. He spoke with members of the media a, a short while after receiving that suspension letter. He, he said that the suspension was strange because he was not aware that of anyone who had been suspended after their firearm had been stolen in such a, in such a manner. And he said that he would be going to his attorney to see what action he could take following his suspension. He, however, did not divulge the letter to the media. Said, he said he would wait until his attorneys go through it before he reveals the letter to the, the wider media. But for now, he is, all he is saying is that he is facing two, he's suspended on two counts coming out of that incident in March where his house was broken into and his firearm, his licensed firearm was stolen. That's all, I, that's all from me for now, Rishi. Thank you very much, Peter Christopher, giving us an update there as to the situation with President of the Prisons Officers Association, Saron Richards. In some other news now, a 23-year-old man drowned on Sunday at Maracas Beach after trying to rescue others who were in distress. According to reports, Jovel James of Enterprise Chagonas was hiking with friends and stopped to rest at Maracas Beach. However, while there, he saw four children and two adults struggling in the water. James is said to have jumped into the water to assist, but he too began experiencing difficulty and disappeared underwater. Lifeguards who were on patrol at the time acted and rescued the children and adults. However, James, they were unable 
able to find him. After searching for some time, James's motionless body was retrieved and attempts to resuscitate him was unfortunately unsuccessful. An autopsy is expected to be performed on the body this week. In more crime news now, and a man was shot during a robbery attempt in Woodbrook this morning. Sources say the victim is currently warded in serious condition but is also stable. He is at the Port of Spain General Hospital. The man was shot when he was approached by an armed assailant who demanded that he hand over his personal items. It is alleged that the man refused to give up his valuables and there was a confrontation during which the firearm went off. Police are investigating. The government is being criticized for the handling of the economy since it took office in September 2015. Economists and members of the public have all weighed in on their decision and we'll have more on this a little bit later in the newscast as we continue to look at how the government performed since taking office. And now for a look at the weather forecast. Uh, a mostly sunny day will be interrupted by cloudy intervals with light to moderate showers in a few areas. There is the chance of some of these showers becoming heavy and thundery near hilly areas. Tonight will be mostly clear despite the odd shower in confined areas. Gusty winds, street and flash flooding can be expected in heavy showers and thunder showers. It's the first day of the new academic year and as such the school year marks a brand new beginning in the child's life and we visited some of the schools in Port of Spain to hear both from the young ones and their parents. Reported Dion Batiste has more. One week ago they would have still been in dreamland on their way to the beach or even hunting for Pokemon. But this Monday morning was different. Bright and early with bags on their backs and lunch kits in their hands, the nation's children made their way to school for the beginning of the new school term. Standard One student Malik Pierre tells us he's excited to be back out. Happy to be back out of school. Happy to be back out of school. And it will be great for me today. But for Adele Moore, the experience was a bit more intimidating as she's just beginning primary school. You know, make some friends, you know, mommy. Oh, you're going to miss mommy. <laughs> All right then, so All right. enjoy your first day, right? The nerve-wracking feeling is not only felt by students. Parents also expressed some anxiety. Well, today is my first day of dropping off my son at Infants, and I was really anxious, and I hope all goes well. At 8.30, bells rang, signaling the official start of classes. Hopefully for each child, the year brings a balanced mix of learning and fun. And now we have Patricia Nichols, now Tobago reporter, on the line to tell us how things went in Tobago. Good afternoon, Patricia. Good afternoon, Rishi, and thank you for having me. Um, what I can tell you, school, all, basically all schools opened in Tobago today. On time, um, we have not received any complaints thus far about any school in particular not being able to open today. Um, I'm still uh, making calls to find out if everything went well in all schools. But for the most part, we've gotten reports that all schools open. And, and that was said by the Education Secretary uh, last week that everything was, um, every, the preparations were on the way and that schools will be ready for uh, September 5th today and uh, we haven't received any complaints contrary to what was said last week by the Education Secretary Hiri Kadet. Um, as I said, I'm awaiting uh, responses from you know, the various uh, principals to figure out if everything went as planned for schools that we may not have heard about that probably did not open today. But based on the information that I have now, is that all schools, including primary, secondary, and even preschools, especially those uh, that are government uh, funded, assisted, will open on time uh, today. But Patricia, have you been able to speak with any of the parents or students, many of them going to school for the first time? Tell us how did they feel? Uh, did you speak with any of them? Well, a couple parents, of course, excitement, um, uh, nervousness uh, from a few because of the fact that it's the first time that they 
child is actually going to school, um, some going to a, a new class, but some uh, in terms of going into school itself, it's the first time, a new experience. So some parents when they were waiting at the gate, making sure that all is well. Uh, but obviously, you couldn't uh, go into the compound for too long because school starts at nine, and uh, it's up. To, uh, they had to leave their children and, and and for them to fend for themselves and get accustomed to the environment. But it's a mixture of nervousness and excitement at the same time this morning. All right, well, thank you very much, Patricia. Patricia Nicholson, our Tobago reporter, just giving us an idea on how things went this morning as it relates to the opening of the new academic year and the new school to many students going out to school for the first time. So exciting, and she said nerve-wracking there. Now, as the Minister of Education says all schools were ready for the new term, the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association says this is not so. David and Sinanan told us there are some schools with contractors still on site. Yes, maybe about five, okay. as, as far as we are concerned. That's, that's uh, a couple of schools that we've been flagging where One work was supposed ago, to have started, um, you know, um, early on in the, in, the, in the vacation, and it didn't. And with the intervention of the minister a mere two weeks ago, um, work was supposed to have been accelerated. So like I said, yesterday, it is my understanding that work was continuing. Mr. Sinanan said oh, they won't have a full picture rather until teachers report later this morning, but he was aware of the infrastructural challenges faced at some institutions in particular. In the case of Five Rivers, um, the new building, there are issues again with the HVAC air conditioning system, there's an issue with the roof, there's an issue with the sewer system, there were some contractual issues that the ministry had to work out with the contractor and as a result um, the old building was refurbished and should be ready for occupation uh, as of this morning by staff and students. Switching gears a bit now and uh, fighting the battle against crime needs a holistic approach and practical suggestions. Leader of the ILP Rekha Ramjit is surprised that only the government and opposition met to discuss the problem of criminal activity in the country and says that there are many qualified persons who could help make the situation better. In a letter to the Prime Minister, Ms. Ramjit suggests that uh, special courts for guns and drug offences should be established along with remand courts at the prisons to assist in clearing the backlog of cases. She believes the full resources of the police should be deployed to all known drug blocks and brothels. She says that reviewing and updating the truancy section of the Education Act should also be initiated, a holistic approach including the voice of persons who have been successful in dealing with the crime situation in the past, Mrs. Ramjit suggests, it could be timely. Switching gears now to politics and the economy, a bad year for Trinidad and Tobago. That's how economist Dr. Indira Sajiwan Ali described the country's performance since the People's National Movement came into office. While she said there has been an issue with the low oil and gas price, government last year persisted with producing a budget of over $63 billion, later reduced to $59 billion, which was not enough. The economy is really characterized by economic stagnation, you know, rising prices, rising mm -hmm. um, cost of utilities, unempl rising unemployment. Yeah. Um, most of the growth sectors are declining. So from the economy perspective, the, over the last year has been a very, very bad year for Trinidad and Tobago. She also noted government was unable to deal with crime as the number of murders have been on the increase. She said it also seems the government has no plan for development. Well, it's uh, two days to go again before the government celebrates its one year in office. So we asked the question, are you satisfied with government's performance on its first year in office? On our social media page, Facebook, here's what some of you had to say. No, seems like they are clueless, crime is out of control, and the country right now is at a standstill. Another responder said, there is no mediation, high taxes, no development, and poor roads. David Mahabir said, of course, I am satisfied and better to come. Irma Lodis said, no, what have they done so far? The government has no plan, they can't act. And they joined to talk about crime, yet they don't have a solution. They should step out of Parliament and fight crime. Siobhan Campbell said, yes, I'm satisfied. Based on the oil price, they did pretty well to keep the country stable. That from Anna Ramdale.
and caught up in a storm. That's the TNT Soka Warriors as they get ready to face the United States on Tuesday in their final group phase World Cup qualifier. The Warriors arrived in Florida on Saturday morning and braved the rainy conditions to hold two sessions on Sunday as they prepare for the game that will decide the group winners. TT currently leads the table with 11 points with the Americans a point adrift. They need a win to make certain of holding off Guatemala, the only other team that could mathematically catch them with a win over St. Vincent and the Grenadines and a U.S. loss to Trinidad and Tobago. The Warriors will have their mandatory walkthrough on the match venue this afternoon ahead of tomorrow's crucial encounter which kicks off at 8 p.m. The game looks likely to go ahead as, as planned as uh, the threat of Hurricane Hermine has subsided. Now even though there was a lot of rainfall in the area which could make for a slippery playing surface. And Roskin Mark, our Sea Sport Director, is with us to give us a little bit of an insight into what we can expect. Roskin? I agree to you. What can we expect tomorrow uh, for that World Cup qualifying match between Trinidad and Tobago and the U.S.? As is the custom between these two countries, this is expected to be another tough, tough one for both of them. Um, the Americans, of course, at home, they'll be expected to win, um, and they need a win to, to try to top the group because I think that would be that Klinsmann's aim and his motivation for this particular game. Uh, but I think Trinidad and Tobago, despite the fact that they're not playing as well as they would like, and uh, coming off that two-all draw with Guatemala, uh, the coach has indicated as much that they didn't play their best game. So he's hoping for much improved performance on Tuesday, and that by itself should make for a very interesting battle. But it's not going to be an easy game for either team. All right, thank you very much, Ruskin. Ruskin Mark, they've given us a little bit of insight into what we can expect when the TNT Soka Warriors take on the United States tomorrow at 8 p.m., so exciting match to look forward to. In basketball now, and Caledonia Clippers wanted to win this one for slain coach Williams Marquis, and they did it in style on Saturday, beating national champions police in the Mayaro Basketball League at the Mayaro Indoor Facility. An inspiring performance for the team who lost their coach when he was shot and killed in Mova on Thursday. Ian Wilson was at the game and has more. Good afternoon, Ian. Ian Wilson is on the line. Uh, Ian, tell us about the game on Saturday. Hey, good afternoon. It was a very, very interesting game with police under pressure from the opening whistle, or from, as we say in basketball, from tip-off. Um, Police, who is normally a dominating team winning the national championships as well as the North Zone, they were under the fire, especially playing without Adrian Joseph, who seems to be rested, and Dexter Emanuel, who is a, a very powerful power forward slash center who would dominate in the paint. He's currently playing, um, engaged in a professional contract in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So Caledonia Clippers themselves, they, because this is not a sanctioned competition from the NBFTT, uh, play, teams can draft in players from different zones and different teams. And of course, um, they took advantage of that. Uh, the Clippers, they took in um, Aku Pascal, who is normally playing with Petro Jazz. And of course, they got Sean Lawrence back from a long injury layoff and they really executed well. Um, at one time police were trailing by about 17 points and uh, despite missing Adrian Joseph and Dexter Manswell, they still had firepower in Fabrice Fisher and uh, Wesley Vinson and they brought the game back in a, to about four points but then of course, Clippers not wanting to give up a 17-point win to eventually lose. That would have been very embarrassing. They eventually held on for a 91-87 win. Now, what was significant for that win, um, that's the first game they would have played without their last coach, um, William Marquis. Remember, he was shot and killed the last Thursday in Mover. And they actually dedicated not only the game to him, but they want to win the tournament. They want to win the Miyago basketball tournament for William Marquis. All right, thank you very much, Ian Wilson. Ian Wilson just giving us a roundup of the basketball activity which took place on Saturday. Now, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley hosted the 2016 Trinidad and Tobago Olympics team at his residence on Sunday. Dr. Rowley said he was disappointed at untoward comments directed at the athletes in recent times and instead commended them for making the sacrifices required to get their talent on the world stage. 
Prime Minister Rowley urged the athletes to always do their best and to marry talent with attitude. Dr. Rowley said the government intends to nurture sport from the primary school level with proper coaching and competition all the way up to university level with a view to promote careers in sport. With just a couple days to go before Wednesday's opening of the Paralympics, organizers are hoping that a late surge of interest will help them fill seats, stretch budgets and avoid criticism that the second stage of the Rio 2016 will be remembered as the neglected games. Financial cuts, downgraded facilities, volunteer shortfalls and poor ticket sales have overshadowed the countdown to the opening ceremony at the Maracana Stadium, prompting fears that the events could be even more sparsely attended than that of the Olympics which was held last month. Barely half of the 2.5 million tickets for the 500 medal events have been sold despite very low prices. Activists said that filling seats was important not just to boost support for competitors but to maximize the transformative impact of the Paralympics as an experience like this can change the way people without disabilities think about those who live with them. Here's what's taking place in the region. The Caribbean's trade bloc's largest sugar exporter is trying to sell off tracts of coastal land to help reduce its debts. The government-owned Guyana Sugar Corporation ran advertisements in newspapers yesterday seeking bids on 2,000 acres of land on the eastern coast, as well as large plots in and near the capital. The company has about U.S. $400 million in debt and had struggled to meet targets for exports to the key European Union market. The company is also seeking a cash injection from government to meet its obligations while overhauling operations. The islands of the Lesser Antilles have been drenched with heavy rains and also experienced gusty winds, thunder and lightning as a result of a tropical wave inching towards them. But it is not expected to become a storm anytime soon. Forecasts to say any development of the system will be slow to occur as it continues to approach the Lesser Antilles and then moves into the Caribbean Sea. The wave is located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles and is moving towards the west. Thank you very much, Mary Therese Bernard, a regional roundup. Now, just to tell you what's to come in the C News report at 7 today, September is World Physiotherapy Month, and the Trinidad and Tobago Physiotherapy Association is using the opportunity to build awareness while addressing some widely held misconceptions about the field. In tonight's I'm Every Woman, we feature Winelli Peer, president of the association. She says, though it's not without its challenges, hers is a very rewarding career. Nothing is ever cut clear and everything is tailored to the type of patient. So it's always something that challenges you mentally to give them the greatest care that they need and finding the best exercise or rehab program. I love seeing people smile and I love to help people. So just being able to change their day, make their day better and seeing that what I am doing is making their life easier is what I love about my job. And that's the C News report at noon. Remember, you can stay with us. Our C News report comes up at 7 p.m. this evening. C News, your news, your country, our job.